Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, classmates. I am tasked to report on um, legal management today. And uh, my report is all about the Republic Act 7722 on Higher Education Act of 1994. So this Republic Act number uh, 7722, an act creating the Commission on Higher Education, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. So in section one, it uh, discusses about the title and it shall be entitled as Higher Education Act of 1994. Section two covers the declaration of policy. So it uh, says that the state shall protect, foster, and promote the right of all citizens to affordable quality education and it also appropriate steps to ensure the education shall be accessible to all. The state shall likewise ensure and protect academic freedom and shall promote its exercise and observance for the continuing intellectual growth, the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of higher level and middle level professionals, the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. State supports institutions of higher learning shall gear their programs to national, regional, and local development plans. Finally, all institutions of higher learning shall exemplify through their physical and natural surroundings, their dignity and beauty, as well as their pride in the intellectual and scholarly life. So that means their dreams, their vision and mission should be manifested in the physical environment of their institution. In section three, creation of the Commission on Higher Education, in pursuance to the above mentioned policy, the Commission on Higher Education is hereby created, hereafter referred to as the Commission. The Commission shall be independent, separate from a uh, department or DepEd, now it's DepEd, and attached to the office of the president for administrative purposes only. Its coverage shall be both public and private institutions of higher education, as well as degree granting programs in all post secondary and educational institutions, public and private. So, in section four, composition of the commission. The commission shall be composed of five full-time members. Uh, we have the secretary of education and the four commissioners. And uh, he shall serve a maximum of one year. Thereafter, the president shall appoint chairman of the commission and four other commissioners who shall be holders of earned doctorate who have been active, actively engaged in the field of education for 10 years and must not have been candidates for elected positions in the elections immediately preceding their appointment. They shall be academicians and known for their high degree of professionalism and integrity. The members of the commission shall, be, uh, shall belong to different academic fields or specialization. In no case shall any and all the commissioners appoint uh, representatives to act on their behalf. In Section 5, Term of Office, the President shall appoint the full-time chairman and the commissioners for a term of four years without prejudice to one reappointment. The terms of the initial appointees shall be on staggered basis. The full-time chairman shall hold the office for a term of four years and uh, the next two commissioners shall, be hold, uh, shall, hold, be, shall hold their office for three years and then the last two commissioners shall hold their office for two years. The commissioner shall hold office until their successor shall have been appointed and qualified. Should a member of the commission shall uh, fail to complete his term, his successor shall be appointed by the president of the Philippines, but only for the unexpired portion of the term. If there is still remaining, uh, for example, if there is still remaining uh, one year for that uh, office officer to get down then the one who is being appointed the newly appointed will still have a one year remaining to also hold the office 
For Section 6, Rank and Emoluments, the Chairman and the Commission shall have the rank of the Department Secretary and Under Secretary, respectively. They shall receive the compensation and other emoluments corresponding to those of a Department Secretary and Under Secretary, respectively, and shall be subject to same qualifications. So if uh, they should be they should be holding a doctor's doctorate degree and they should have a ten year experience, then uh, those are applicable applicable to board uh, positions. For board of directors in section seven, there shall be constituted a board of direct uh, advisors, which shall meet the commission at least once a year to assist in its aligning its policies and plans with the cultural, political, and socio-economic development needs of the nation and with the demands of world-class scholarship. So there must be a board who would review a, uh, a group of uh, the officers who would serve as count, uh, consultants for the processes being done by the commission or, or the activities done by the commission. The board of uh, Advisor shall be composed of the following. First, the Secretary of Education. And then we have the Director General of the National Economic and Development Authority as full chairman. So the Secretary of Education will be the chairman, and the Director General of the National Economic and Development Authority shall be the full chairman. And then we have the Secretary of Science and Technology, the Secretary of Trade and Industry, the Secretary of Labor and Employment, the President of the Federation of Accrediting Associations of the Philippines, or FAAP, and the President of the Fund for Assistance to Private Education, which is the FAPE. So there are additional two additional members of the board, uh, board of advisors, and they may be appointed by the President upon the recommendation of the Commission. And then we have Section 8 powers and functions of the commission. The commission shall have the following powers and functions. First, formulate and recommend development plans, policies, priorities, programs, and higher education and research. And then we have formulate and recommend development plans, policies, priorities, and programs on research alone. Okay, we all know that and every institution shall have research because this is very much uh, significant and relevant to the development and profitability and productivity of any institution. In letter C, recommend to the executive and legislative branches priorities and grants on higher education and research. So still research is there. Letter D, set minimum standards for programs and institutions for higher learning recommended by panels of experts in the field and subject to public hearing and enforced the same. So there will still be evaluation of all this uh, standard set by the Commission. Letter E, monitor and evaluate the performance of programs and institutions, higher learning for appropriate incentives, as well as the imposition of sanctions, as such, but not limited to the diminution or withdrawal of subsidy, recommendation on the downgrading or withdrawal of accreditation program, termination or school closure. So monitoring and evaluation are strictly implemented. Identify, support, and develop potential centers of excellence in program areas needed for the development of world class scholarship, nation building, and national development. So every potential from every institution in higher education should also be given the chance uh, to be promoted and uh, be developed more towards national and uh, world-class uh, scholarship and development. Third, she recommends to the Department of Budget and Management the budgets of public institutions of higher learning as well as general guidelines for the use of their income. And then we have letter H, rationalized programs and institution higher learning and set standards policies and guidelines for the creation of new ones as well as the conversion or elevation of schools to institutions of higher learning subject to budgetary limitations and the number of institutions of higher learning in the province or region where creation, conversion, or elevation is sought to be made. So the programs should also be uh, recognized 
and should be uh, reviewed by the Commission. Letter I develop criteria for allocating additional resources such as research and program development grants, scholarships, and other similar programs, provided that this shall not detract from the fiscal autonomy already enjoyed by the colleges and universities. So that means um, the universities or colleges have also the, the discretion to at least uh, make their schedule and uh, they have also the right to protect this the the plans and uh, the, the the schedule they make for their institution but of course the the offers of the commission are all welcome and then letter j we have direct or redirect purpose of research by institutions of higher learning to meet the needs of agro industrialization and development we all know that right now the chat or the dost is more fo are more focused on funding the agricultural researches and uh, in the, for industrialization or the technological the science researches are more given uh, priorities at this point in time and um Lurking, we have devised and implement a resource development scheme. So uh, there's devising and uh, the proper implementation of resource development scheme. And letter L, administer the higher education development fund as uh, described in section 10 here under, which will promote the purposes of higher education. So the commission will also administer the fund which will be elaborated later on in section 10. There and review the charters of institution of higher learning and state universities and colleges, including the chairmanship and membership of their governing bodies and recommend appropriate measures as basis for necessary action. So still there's the monitoring and evaluation and trying, um, having given their right uh, to the constitution to include in some uh, state universities and colleges processes done in their institution. There and promulgate such rules and regulations and exercise such other powers and functions as may be necessary to carry out effectively the purpose and objectives of the act and there or perform such other functions as may be necessary for its effective operations and for the continued enhancement, growth, or development of higher education. Okay, so the commission is still in charge of and in control of almost every process done in the colleges and um, universities, state universities. So in section nine, the secretariat, the commission shall organize the secretariat, which shall be headed uh, by an executive officer, subject to national compensation and position classification plan. It shall fix the secretariat's staffing pattern uh, determine the duties, uh, qualifications, responsibilities, and function, as well as the compensation scheme for the positions to be created upon the recommendation of the executive officer. It shall also prepare and approve its budget. The commission shall appoint the members of the staff upon the recommendation of the of the executive officer. And then we have section 10 about the budget a while ago. So the Higher Education Development Fund, Higher Education Development Fund, hereafter referred to as the fund, is hereby established ex uh, exclusively for the strengthening of higher education in the entire country. So the government contribution to the fund shall be the following. There should be a seed capital of 500 million and the amount of 50 million pesos, 50 million, for the initial operation of the commission. The equivalent of 40% annual share on the uh, total gross collection of travel tax, the equivalent of 30% to uh, share of the collections from the professional registration fees. All of this uh, make up the fund for this uh, for the commission in higher education. And then uh, fifth, we have the equivalent of 1% of the gross sales of the Philippine Charter Services Office of the or the local operation. 
So there are a lot of uh, funds that is uh, that compose uh, the fund. Again, we have the 500 million listed capital, the 50 million as operation, operational capital, and so, or startup capital. We have about 40 percent coming from the travel tax and 30 percent coming from the professional registration fee, and then one percent from level operation. And then letter B, starting fiscal year 1995, every year after that, the government financing institution identified and requested by the commission may contribute to the fund an amount equivalent to not less than 3%, but not more than 5% of the unimpaired surplus realized during the immediately preceding year. Okay, so basically there are also um, other agencies or government institutions that are uh, are asked or requested to um, donate to this uh, commission. And then we have the fund shall have a private portion to be raised from the nation's gifts and other conveniences, including materials, equipment, properties, and services by gratuitous, gratuitous fiber. Okay, so these donations, the gifts, that they receive uh, the, the commission will also by the government the commission will also have a portion of that and then in section 11 the management and administration of higher education development fund so we a while ago we discussed about where the funds are coming from and now we have the management of the fund the fund shall be administered by the commission for sound and judicious management of the fund the commission shall appoint a reputable government financial institution as portfolio manager of the fund subject to the following conditions. As, administration, uh, as administrator of the fund, the commission shall prepare the necessary guidelines for its use subject to the following conditions. So no part of the seed capital of the fund, including earnings thereof, shall be used to underwrite overhead expenses for the administration. So if there are other expenses of they have gone beyond the budget given to them or assigned to them, then the, the seed capital and other fundings, funds of the commission shall not be used for their overs, overhead expenses. Unless others otherwise stipulated by the private donor, only earnings of private contribution shall be used for administrative expenses. So it could also be used for their overhead expenses, but it should be stipulated in the contract or it should be stipulated by the uh, donors themselves that this one, this fund is appropriate to use for this particular item, something like that. And then the commission shall appoint and organize a separate staff independent administrative administ and budgetarily separate from the commission secretariat. Okay, so there's still monitoring and evaluation. This separate and independent administrate administration on budgetary uh, budgetary budgetary processes. It's also uh, it's also commissioned to check on and monitor and evaluate the processes of the commission secretariat. Check and balance. And uh, the fund shall be utilized equitably according to regions and programs. So the fund, of course, in every region and every program, there are proposals submitted, and it is based on the programs and sub proposals submitted by the regions for their programs. And then uh, appropriate funds should be given to these regions. <coughs> So in section 12, the technical panels, the commission shall reconstitute and organize technical panels for different disciplines, program areas. They shall assist the commission in setting standards and in program and institution monitoring and evaluation. The technical panels shall be composed of senior specialists or academicians to be appointed by the commission. So there should also be technical panels in trying to uh, organize and reorganize the the commission and section 13 guarantee of academic freedom nothing in this act shall be construed as limiting the academic freedom of universities and colleges in particular no abridgment of 
curricular freedom of the individual educational institutions where the commission shall be made except for a minimum unit requirement of four specific uh, academic programs. General education distribution requirements as may be determined by the convention. Learn specific professional subject as may be stipulated by the various licensing entities. No academic or circular restriction shall be made upon private educational institutions, which are not required for chartered state colleges and universities. So if there is academic freedom for the instructors or facilitators in every institution, then the institution itself has also its academic freedom from the commission or nationwide. In section 14, there's this accreditation. The commission shall provide incentives to institutions of higher learning, uh, public and private, whose programs are accredited or whose need are, needs are for accreditation purposes. So basically, the uh, we have the accreditation like and done by the by the accrediting agencies by the government. So I guess we have the supervised also by the chat, of course. And when they an institution go further or uh, reach their goals, uh, reach the requirements as a state U or colleges, then there's an uh, there's an incentive for that. They are given uh, an incentive for that. So uh, you notice that every institution is trying to come up with higher level of accreditation every three years. Because that is the appropriate uh, period for when they get to to get the proper evaluation for their produce or product, the graduates of the universities. So that's where they get the uh, accreditation or uh, invite accreditors to try to check and balance and monitor and evaluate the processes inside the institution. In section 15, we have the tax exemption. Any donation, contribution, bequest, and grant which may be made to the commission shall not constitute as allowable deduction from the income of the donor for income tax purposes and shall be exempt from donor's tax. Subject to such condition as provided under the National Internal Revenue Code as amended. So basically there are no tax. If it's a donation for this, for this commission, for the Education Commission, then it has no tax. In section 13, uh, 16, uh, authority, the commission shall exercise such authority as may be deemed necessary within its premises or areas of operation to effectively carry out its powers and functions and to attain its objectives, provided that the commission may seek the assistance of other government agencies for the proper implementation of this act. So it's very clear that the commission is the one um, is the authority in trying to, to process or to implement its rules and policies. But if there's a need for the commission to, to solicit help or assistance from other agencies, then it could also be done by the commission. In section 17, appropriation, the amount of 500 million Pesos is hereby authorized to be appropriated for the state capital of the fund, as it was mentioned a while ago. The additional amount of 50 million pesos is hereby authorized to be appropriated out of the funds in the national treasury, not otherwise appropriated or out of the fund of Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or Palco funds for the initial operation of the commission. So the 50,000. 50 million is hereby authorized to be appropriated out of the funds of national treasury and not from the top floor. So the sum equivalent to the appropriations for the current year for the Bureau of Higher Education and the degree granting programs of the Bureau of Technical Vocational Education, including those for higher and tertiary education and degree granting vocational and technical programs of Bureau of Technical Vocational Education in the regional offices as well as parts of the budgetary items under CHAD budget that are concerned with higher and tertiary education and degree granting vocational and technical programs such as those 
for personal services, maintenance, and other operating expenses and capital outlay shall be transferred to the commission. Thereafter, the funds necessary shall be included in the General Appropriations Act. That is the point of the commission. So during the transitory provision, uh, in Section 18, we have the transitory provision. Such personal, the properties, assets, and liabilities, functions, and responsibilities of the Bureau of Higher Education or the Commission of Higher Education, including those for higher and tertiary education and degree granting, vocational and technical programs in the region, uh, offices, regional offices, under the CHAD, under CHAD and other government ent entities having functions similar to those of the Commission are hereby transferred to the Commission. So it, it happens that there's a transitory, there's a transition, then all of the properties of this uh, previous um, Commission should also be transferred to the new uh, created Commission. The Commission shall have the authority to appoint its personnel. All regular or permanent employees transferred to the Commission shall not suffer any loss of seniority or rank or decrease in emoluments. Personnel of the Bureau of uh, Chad otherwise transferred to the Commission shall be reassigned by the Commission in its office and bureaus. So there's reassignment and all of this personal is transferred to the new organized commission and uh, that any employee who cannot be accommodated again in a new organization shall be given all the benefits as may be provided under existing laws, rules, and regulations. So if there's a transition period, then no employee can be disregarded because they have uh, existing laws and rules and regulations that could provide for these uh, employees who cannot be, will not be accommodated in the new or existing organization information. And then we have the jurisdiction, jurisdiction or chartered state supported post-secondary degree granting vocational and technical programs and tertiary institutions shall be transferred to the commission. So all of these degree granting vocational and technical programs shall also be transferred to the new commission. A transitory body is hereby created, which shall be composed of the now chat chair of the Senate Committee on Education, Arts and Culture, chair of the House on Education, Committee on Education, uh, representative of each of the Association of Christian Schools. We also have the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines. Philippines, the Philippines Association of College and Universities, or PAPU, the Philippine Association of Private Schools, Colleges and Universities, the PAPU, the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, the PASU, and the Philippine Association of Private Technical Institutes, the PAPU. So the transitory body shall facilitate the complete and full operation of the commission, which shall not be later than three months after the effectivity of this act. It shall likewise promulgate the rules and regulations necessary to effectively implement the smooth and orderly transfer to the Commission. The transition period not exceeding three months shall commence from the approval of this. So once the transition period has begun, three months, uh, within three months, it shall all, already be transferred to the new Commission. With those, uh, with, the, with the help and assistance and uh, with the collective decision of those institutions mentioned. And in Section 19 Repealing Clause, all laws, presidential decrees, executive orders, rules and regulations as part thereof, which are inconsistent with the provisions of this act are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. Of course, if it's not already um, applicable to the new commission or if it's not already helpful to the process that's being done in the new uh, commission, made commission, created commission, then it must be repealed or modified. And in section 20, separability clause, if any part or provision of this act shall be held unconstitutional or invalid, other provisions here of which are not affected thereby shall continue to be in full force and effect. 
So if there are uh, rules and regulations and executive orders and decrees that should be repealed, then there's also these rules, regulations, and decrees and executive orders that should not be repealed or should not be modified, which are still helpful, will we'll continue to be in full force and effect to the new uh, commission, created commission. In section 21, the effectivity of this act shall take effect upon its approval. So with that ends my report. You can have your questions after uh, I close with this quote. Make crime pay. Become a lawyer. Again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Maridesi Goral, and uh, God bless everyone.